we continue our discussion on multigrid method on this uh, lecture number 27th and uh, we see that uh, there are various uh, uh, operations which were not done before for example we need to prolong our solution from a uh, coarse grid to fine grid and vice versa and that's where we once again fall back upon the two grid solution method and try to identify what will work and once we have done uh, that we have understood the basic elements of multi grid method we can talk about different types of multi grid methods for example the cycles that one uh, employs in the multi grid method in migrating from various levels of grid is uh, given in terms of v cycle or w cycle and this is what uh, we are going to talk about and we uh, note that uh, multi grid method since uh, it works on a host of grids um, it does of course uh, put some restriction on the accuracy of the method and uh, there are other uh, methods which we will not be able to talk about but they are of uh, more recent interest but uh, this multi grid method uh, uses the spectral uh, portrait of uh, the iterative uh, process and that is why we have discussed it so far. <coughs> now, uh, uh, having concluded uh, briefly about uh, this uh, solution methods of elliptic equation, we come to uh, considering uh, solution methods for hyperbolic partial differential equations and we note that one of the most accurate method is the method of characteristics or MOC. Unfortunately, MOC has its own uh, limitations which we identify that it cannot handle uh, mixed problems which are readily amenable to other discrete methods. So, that is what we are trying to do and uh, we uh, try to solve the 1D convection equations and uh, we show actually that uh, the most accurate method for this 1D convection equation comes from a first order upwind scheme and then we try to show also that uh, this could be solved by midpoint leapfrog method. This is essentially nothing but the Richardson method that we have introduced in uh, uh, for parabolic equation and uh, what we uh, uh, find uh, that uh, this uh, though brings in a spurious mode but uh, both the modes have uh, neutral stability. So, there is a case for studying it. In fact, this is what is generally used for uh, inviscid weather prediction codes. We also talk about other methods of solving hyperbolic equation namely the classic uh, LAC scheme and the LAC Vendorov scheme. Okay, uh, then let us uh, begin again uh, just a matter of recap of what we started looking at. This is one of the method called the multi grid method which is quite often used um, for solving problems and one of the better element of this method is that you do not have to uh, design it specifically for any particular problem. It uh, is a methodology that can be adopted to any particular uh, elliptic uh, problems. So, we will uh, just go through what we had done yesterday. We started looking at a model problem which of course, uh, admits the exact solution. Uh, despite that, uh, we noted that um, we may like to solve this problem in a sequence of grid and which are given by h 0, h 1, h 2, h 3 as the spacing. So, we are basically doubling the number of points at each level. right? And So, what you find that um, grid spacing has this kind of a, a decreasing sequence where the grid spacing is given in terms of uh, the number of points that we have given by n l. So, at any particular grid level we can uh, collate all the points together and call the set as uh, omega l which will have uh, this sequence of points separated by uh, distance h l. <coughs> now, uh, discretizing that uh, primitive equation uh, would lead to a matrix equation that was given here and you can clearly uh, see as you have seen already <coughs> that it uh, is a basically a, a tridiagonal equation. So, it could be solved exactly 
uh, in a sense numerically. Please note that uh, Dirichlet boundary condition actually uh, alters the first and the last entry of uh, this uh, equation to accommodate uh, the boundary condition, right. Otherwise, whatever may be the forcing that goes to the right hand side from point 2 to n minus 1. The first point uh, uh, which we have written here F L F 1 L we have indicated with a prime to indicate that uh, the boundary condition information has uh, been incorporated there. <coughs> and uh, we started looking at uh, the Eigen value and Eigen spectrum of this. If we are looking at a periodic problem in the dimension 0 to pi, uh, then we can take the uh, Fourier sign series as the Eigen vectors and the Eigen values are given in terms of this. So, this is uh, uh, what we get is that the eigenvalues will be given by minus 4 by the spacing square times sin square of uh, pi nu h l by 2. And uh, we did uh, go through the splitting we uh, showed in terms of the point Jacobi iteration that uh, the iteration sequence uh, proceeds from u j to u j plus 1 driven by this uh, term which we called as a defect defect is nothing but uh, the discretized form at that particular iteration level and that is driven by the method and in this case the Jacobi method uh, pushes it through that uh, diagonal matrix uh, D L inverse. Hmm. Now, uh, to explain what uh, classical iteration does, uh, we uh, looked at uh, under relaxation Jacobi method and uh, we note uh, that instead of taking the defect times uh, d l inverse, we multiply by a theta to indicate uh, the kind of uh, under relaxation we are performing. <coughs> and uh, that leads to the usual form that we are familiar with an amplification matrix M uh, working on the previous iterate. And to that, uh, we add those additional term coming from the forcing term to arrive at the fresh update of the method that is given here u l of j plus 1. And in the process you actually can note the eigenvalue of this amplification matrix is given in terms of the equation given in the end, where omega is of course, theta by 2 theta is the capital theta is the under relaxation parameter. Okay. <coughs> now, we have gone through this and we have shown compared uh, the spectral radius of the case where we have under relaxation with uh, half and, and, and a method which is uh, not uh, subjected to any uh, relaxation at all that is uh, the second line. And we can see that uh, this uh, basically uh, changes eigenvalue spectrum quite uh, differentially and that is what we noted in this figure. We noted that when we actually indeed do uh, uh, under relax by choosing theta equal to half, we uh, end up uh, very effectively damping this later half of this uh, wave numbers, which are given by nu h l going from 0.5 to 1. Whereas, uh, comparatively this is inferior compared to the case of without any relaxation, right at, at the large scale at the large scale. And, uh, from this schematic diagram, we reasoned out that at the large scale, uh, basically you will find that in some part of the domain, all these errors uh, destructively interferes and adds on to the value of the error, whereas in other places it can have some kind of a mutual can cancellation. <coughs> so, uh, I just made a point that uh, uh, normal mode analysis of looking at one mode at a time. Uh, is not a very appropriate one, because after all your error is composed of all the components simultaneously present and you are going to see the distortion of the error, because of the sketch that we have shown here in this uh, to the right of the slide. <coughs> now, uh, having uh, noted this that uh, if we decide to under relax, then we can control the high wave numbers very effectively. If we do not do it, then we can control it somewhere in between, whereas we have large error at the large scale as well as the small scale. So, that prompts us uh, 
to look at the possibility of using multiple grids and to explain what multiple grid does. Uh, again, we take a sub example of that particular problem where we let us say employ only two grids, okay? one uh, with the spacing of HL and the another uh, which has a spacing twice that size. <clears throat> so, what we uh, actually do is we start off with some kind of initial guess u old uh, and then uh, we perform uh, some small number of iterations. Okay? And let us say we are doing some kind of a under relaxation and if we do that what this uh, uh, smoothing operation uh, what this uh, iteration does is basically essentially a smoothing operation because we have seen that it removes the high wave number and high wave numbers give rise to those jitters in the solution. right? So, if I am effectively being able to remove those high wave number component essentially uh, I am basically getting a smoother solution. So, if I uh, look at V of L here which is nothing but the smooth solution minus uh, the unsmooth solution then that quantity would be rather a uh, lot smoother than what we began with. So, uh, what happens is uh, since the defect is given by what we have at that present level the residue uh, with a minus sign that is what is our defect. So, what we could do is we could actually try to solve for this exact correction that we require. right? We Our exact solution is u of l and the smoothing gives us u bar of l. So, the difference between the two is the exact correction that is required. right? So, the exact correction uh, is governed by this equation L L into V L and instead of V L I put that definition down here as u bar minus u and that would give me the defect back. So, essentially to obtain the exact correction we have to solve the same problem, uh, but now the right hand side is replaced by the defect at that level. right? That is what uh, that right hand side of equation A indicates that the correction is driven by the defect at that level. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, this is uh, what we uh, started uh, discussing towards the end that uh, we started off working with a, a fine grid H L grid. Now, what we are going to do is we have exhausted all possible potential benefit at the fine grid. So, we migrate to the next uh, grid that H L minus 1 grid and that is where we want to solve for this exact correction. right? We are looking for the exact correction V L, so but instead of working at uh, the H L grid we uh, went over to the H L minus 1 grid because we have exhausted the all pos positive benefit of H L grid. Now, uh, in uh, solving this equation of course, the operator is known to us right? and this is what we will be calculating in the course grid but the right hand side is to be obtained and how it is obtained from the fine grid sol uh, solution. From the fine grid solution we can estimate d of l and then what we do is we project it to the coarse grid and that projection is done through what is called as a restriction operator. Uh, so, that essentially means that we are taking the data from the fine to the coarse grid. Okay. Uh, if you uh, really look at uh, let us say the points that we have. Uh, Let us say we have uh, taken uh, this as our fine grid and uh, let us say uh, what we do is we, we take a well let us say this is the coarse grid and we take the fine grid by having this colored uh, 